Um, this is going to be a quick tutorial about buckling in Fusion. I'm going to start by making a slender rod and then I'm going to um, run a buckling analysis and try and find the force at which it will buckle. So for my slender rod uh, I'm going to make it um, a loft between two circles and the first circle I will have um, a two millimeter diameter and then I want uh, and I'll stop that sketch that's fine and then I want my rod to be uh, 300 millimeters long so I'm going to construct a plane 300 millimeters away uh, which is there I used construct offset plane for that and then I'm going to sketch on that plane and now I want a second circle um, and this one, the last one was 2, I'll make this one 1.5 um, and if I just zoom out a bit and then tip that over um, I'm going to have to zoom out quite a lot more um, you can sort of see that I've got um, two circles. The aspect ratio here is a bit tricky. So let's just go on and immediately create a loft on that. And what I'm going to say is I want to connect this profile, profile 1, and this profile, profile 2. And once I do that, you can kind of see what's going on a bit more clearly. Um, there is my very slender tapered rod. Um, and I could do different things there to get slightly different um, sizes, but um, that's the, the rough idea. So you can make a model like that. The next thing that I'm going to do is just apply a material to it. Down this side we've got all of the different things we've made, and if I look under bodies I can find body one, which is all of that that I've just made, that slender rod. and if I, so what I did there was right clicked, I'll do it again just for clarity, I uh, right click physical material there and then there's a pop out menu here and if I choose metal, scroll all the way down somewhere there's steel comma mild and I can do that um, and I've got now what I want to work with so the next thing that I'm going to do up here where it says model uh, there are a number of options about different things I can do I'm going to want to think about simulation and you can see I can do a static stress or I can test modal frequencies but I'm actually going to be interested here in structural buckling uh, and you can see it says the results include buckling modes so we'll be able to see um, what the buckling will look like and their load multipliers and if I've understood correctly uh, maybe I haven't um, those load multipliers are sort of telling us the buckling strength the force required to cause this thing to buckle um, just uh, suddenly noticed there are various things I might be able to hover over there anyway I can't um, so I will say create that study we specified materials and in general in FEA we want three things materials, constraints and loads uh, so I'm going to choose constraints and then choose the bottom face and you can see I get this padlock on it and I can say OK uh, I'm trying to tip this over sorry you probably can't tell that that's what I'm doing now I've got the top face of the tapered rod and I'm going to add a load on there and um, in these buckling simulations what I had recommended by um, our Autodesk person at LSBU was if you put in one Newton as your force it makes everything work okay because when you then see a load multiplier that's how many times you'd have to multiply one Newton to get the thing to buckle so it's kind of your load multiplier is kind of then the buckling strength in newtons. Um, 
again I'm sort of new to some of this so uh, if I'm getting things wrong <laughs> let me know but uh, that's how I understand it um, okay well I think I've got most things that I need there let's just uh, check and see what the uh, mesh looks like just takes a minute okay um, so it's made up of, you know it I guess my worry was what if it's just one mesh element wide or something like that but I mean I can't see that that mesh is likely to give us many problems if you wanted you could go to manage settings mesh and reduce the element size let's just do that anyway because we can um, and now I can go um, to the mesh view and I guess I need to go over here and say generate mesh um, because I've updated the mesh settings so I had this warning and a warning down here that the mesh was out of date I may have set things so it's going to run far too slowly if that's the case um, I'll cancel it but no that looks like it's working fine and we got a slightly smaller finer mesh okay um, that's all good I don't see anything else that I particularly want to do there um, simplify I guess I could take advantage of symmetry and cut corners there but I don't need to do that either so let's just hit solve and I'm going to say okay I want to solve that study um, and again I hope this won't take too long um, I won't pause the video at the moment but if it seems like it's going to take 10 minutes I'll pause the video well I might as well pause okay uh, it took about 10 minutes um, so I can close that and what we've got um, first of all let's just uh, look at some of the things we can see it says here buckling mode one we can also choose buckling mode two and there's a third mode visible which has a noticeably different shape um, and we're looking at the color map is total displacement where one is the maximum displacement and zero is the minimum displacement and the color map isn't particularly interesting in these things um, but the number that we actually want is I think this one um, 3.338 times load uh, when I put in that load saying it was one Newton at the start what this is telling me is that actually I'd need 3.338 times that to cause it to buckle ie the buckling load on this is about 3.338 Newtons and uh, the force required to force mode 3 would be 24.69 uh, newtons for example and I guess I'd have to prevent mode 1 in order to ever see mode 3 um, but I mean those are the details of of the buckling um, I guess the the headline number is that once you get beyond about 3 newtons on top of this um, uh, tapered pole then the thing is going to buckle uh, which probably isn't that much of a surprise and that's how you do buckling analysis in um, Fusion 360 at least on a fairly simple level of buckling analysis